Hey guys, it's Density. This video is going to be on a breakdown of the boss mechanics for electrohypostasis. Before we start, there's going to be a couple things to mention, and for those of you who are good on these tips, please skip over to the next time frame. But for those who are sticking around, um, now the first tip is going to be that you're not locked to a specific character. You can pretty much play any character that's not identical to the boss's element. Number two, it is best suggested early on in the game that you go about making one to two Berserker artifact sets, because you'll get a lot of them and they provide great set bonuses. Um, and be sure to, of course, level them up as well um, for greater uh, boss stat add ons. And the third tip is going to be that if you have the character at least five to ten levels ahead of the boss, um, you will pretty much get a major stat jump and it, the boss itself will become easier to fight. Okay, so starting out with the fight, I've got Cheng Yun and Xiang Ling. So not everyone's going to have this, of course, but uh, anyone that has a great sword or a bow that has charged abilities, that can charge up elemental abilities, uh, or even using alts of a specific character like Xiang Ling um, with a Pyro Needle is very useful at the end of the fight. The boss at the start of the fight does a common triple attack pattern. It can be dodged by doing multiple quick dashes that give invincibility frame. The closer you are to the boss, the higher of the chances of this animation is to cancel. Bear in mind that you do not need to hold down the sprint key as the string is your stamina and can be saved for later attacks from the boss. When the boss is exposed as he is in his form with no cues around him, this is an opportunity to attack him, otherwise he is invincible. The drill form that he takes in shape of is also dodgeable. Move pretty much in the opposite direction and you're good. When the boss is up in the air shooting cubes at you, you can just walk in either the left or right direction and the boss is also vulnerable to attacks. Notice that the only mage classes like Mona can take advantage of this when soloing. Now the boss is going to go into this laser phase and you can actually go into the center of the circle and strike it. I'm also utilizing Xiang Ling to try and build her Q skill that'll be helpful with the end part of the fight, which you'll see later in the video. If you're still struggling with the boss, you can also try to use attack, critical chance, and defense buff foods early on to help. There's also two more attack patterns that boss does. The first one to mention is where he becomes stationary, which you'll see here. And you'll see pillars drop down all around you to increase the fire. You can get out of this by breaking the pillars with physical attack or a sword or claymore that has a few elements. The earlier you get out, the better. The second attack pattern is a spiraling wave that goes out from the center of the boss's location. This is only avoidable by running further away from the boss and to watch out where those waves may hit you. Last of all is the recovery phase when the boss has a slither of health and he'll try to regenerate his HP by dropping down three prisms that need to be destroyed. I hated this at first, but to be finding it okay now going forward. The less of the prisms that remain, the lower of the health regeneration. To break the prisms are a little difficult and is done by the combination of physical attacks with an element. This should destroy the prisms, and it is best advised to do bigger damaging skills to knock out the prisms. Alright, so that concludes the video, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys liked the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I also wanted to thank my friend for helping me out with the video. If you guys have any questions uh, or suggestions and feedback, please drop it in the comment section down below.